Heavenly Father, we ask your voice, your mind, wow, your wisdom, your truth for us this morning. We thank you for that. Thank you for all things that you give us kindly. Within our Lord Yeshua, we pray, amen. My understanding is that John has a question. Prithee. Well, if this doesn't go full length, whatever I have, some other things we can talk about, but I've been going through 1 Corinthians 13, which is always dangerous, but um, came to the section where is, you know, love is patient, love is kind, and is not jealous. And that just got me thinking that, you know, in the Old Testament, it talks about how um, in the Ten Commandments specifically, I, Yahweh, your God, I'm a jealous God. And just wondering if we can talk about the difference between those two things, if, you know, God is a loving God, so <laughs> and jealousy, like, is there a difference between what they're meaning using those terms? Yeah, we can, but you caught me off guard. I've looked that up before. Uh, of course, we're talking about Hebrew versus Greek, too. And uh, if I remember right, the actual word for zeal, jealous, zealous, mm -hmm. it's an overheating. Uh, in other words, something, boy, I'm, I'm ready to pour myself out on that. Um, Yahweh often, it's, it's so funny because he will describe himself often as jealous. Um, and I think, again, and this is something, you know, I, I feel like almost, but I'm not. People in, in science, people in opinion, people in religion, I think especially, come up with what we call rescue devices. I was looking last night at Dr. Lyle's, uh, Jason Lyle's stuff on logic, and we may go and look at that sooner than later. He, uh, he brings up the use of, uh, oh my goodness, I just forgot the word. Excuse, what did I just say? Rescue device. What? Rescue device. Rescue device. Thank you. You're very good. You want to get up here and do this? Uh, uh, a rescue device. Well, he's certainly younger than I am. He's got to be, you know. Um, the the rescue device is, if you want to put it, and I said excuse, the excuse that we have for believing this. The two words are the same in the English. At least they've been translated that way. They're not exactly the same in the Greek and the Hebrew been a long time since I looked up in the Hebrew, but I should have known to look that up, I'm sorry. Um, God's jealousy is something that's completely different than ours. My jealousy about something is because I want control over it, and I want it paying attention to me, and I want um, it, it, all attention focused on me. Jealous people with jealousy uh, and boy mankind has done this often will think oh good they're jealous I mean there's people that, that <clears throat> in a relationship won't believe that someone cares about them unless they're jealous and you'll see them you know trying to stir up the other person to be jealous and you've got to be amazed. Uh, you want somebody, you want jealousy. <clears throat> and they, it, they have defined the emotion and the actions and the anger that often comes with jealousy as, oh, they're loving me now. And uh, jealousy is, is not love um, in, the, in the way we define it. Now, why did I bring up about the rescue device? I know you're ready to say it. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, but uh, because a, a rescue device here for me would be, wow, okay, and we, we know what jealousy means, but do we? Uh, in the same way that we can use 
I remember one time I looked up in in a secular dictionary, <clears throat> and I think it probably got all of them wrong, the word Christian. I looked up the word Christian, and there were 18 different definitions. Now, our Lord just probably gives us one, okay? But 18 different definitions. I, I've told this before. I, I knew a man. He was a biology professor of mine, and... Uh, he was, he was atheist. It was obvious, and he believed in evolution and all that very violently. And um, I hope he got saved. I, would, I didn't have a brain to pray for him back then. Anyway, um, if he's still alive, he's quiet. Anyway, the, he got upset at something that I wrote in a, personal journal that we had to turn in and they, he graded them. It was an advanced level biology class. And uh, I, I said something like, thank God this was a hawk. He has learned to be afraid of man. And he circled it in red and put, what about, you know, the survival of the fittest. What about this? What about that? And those, most people, I mean, come on, you hear it all. Oh, thank God that happened. Are they thanking God? Nah, they're just saying the words. Um, but he reacted because he knew I meant it. And I said, you told us we could write whatever we wanted to in these journals. You said it. He said, yeah, but, you know, I said, but I'm a Christian. This is the way I believe. And he looked at me, his little atheist self, and said, we're all Christian. Now, I think biblically we can safely assume no matter how many PhDs he has behind his name, he's wrong, okay? The Bible does not say that even close to it. The minority are going to be those. It's just going to be this remnant through all the days that uh, come to know and love the Lord. Um, and, and our desire is for all, and just as many as possibly can, and will. And so that's part of our job in making disciples, those that love him. Um, but he believed, he, he said he was Christian because he was born in a Christian country. Now, what we have going on is two different definitions of what the, world, the word says. Um, he says... Christian means Christian country. Well, what does Christian country mean? Of course, I promise you, it means I was born into a country that claims itself to be Christian. Is it really Christian? It is not. I'm using the word as a, as a Christian, and I'm using it as a once saved, always saved Baptist, completely clueless, and probably wasn't any more Christian than he was at that time. Now, either way, we were not communicating very well, because the words that we use, and this is typical, this is not just in English, it is also, uh, in those of you that speak Canadian, uh, no, it, it's, it's in all sorts of languages, including the Greek and the Hebrew. The, oh, both of those languages, you know, have, they'll have stacks of, of uh, definitions behind them. And, and it gets worse, of course, because when you look up the definition in so many of these things, they'll say, A.V. says. Well, what's that mean? Authorized version, King James, says this. And so we can't touch that. And it's not what the word means. Why, are you, why, why did you say that? Uh, and you're looking it up to find out what the Greek definition was at that time. 2,000 years ago, when they used the word ecclesia, what did it mean? didn't mean church. It was nowhere near close to it. We defined it in the uh, starting in the, uh, I believe, third and fourth centuries and started using that word church. And we define it the way we define it now, even though the word is not for ecclesia, it's not church. The word Gehenna is not, didn't mean hell. All these, these things, we have to look at what, what is the person speaking, trying to, to communicate. Uh, and with that, though, I think my rescue device is actually pretty good because 
when you look at man's jealousy, it's different than God's jealousy. And so there in, in many ways is the answer. For I, Yahweh, your God, am a jealous God. Uh, and yet when we see, even in the law, what do we see? We see the test for a man that is jealous about his wife. It's in the law. If this person is jealous, this is what this is what the way that they figure it out. Spirit of jealousy comes on him. Yeah, a spirit of jealousy that comes on him. And uh, it's I, I promise you the spirit of jealousy that comes upon him is not like God's. Um, we see before Christ is born in the uh, Greek scriptures, it makes a statement of Joseph was a, a, a good man. He was a, a righteous man, a caring man. And you get the distinct feeling, and it's talking about Jesus's earthly stepdad, that he, he really was that good. Why, why? Because the woman who he is not only engaged to, but back then they would have had a betrothal and somebody was betrothed. Engagement was, will you marry me? Yes. And then there was a time of that the, the person was betrothed to the person. That was about a year. And during that year, they were considered to be man and wife, but they did not come together physically. And they did not live in the same place. And she still lived there, but they were, they were considered to be married. They are now betrothed. So Mary is betrothed, not just engaged, betrothed to uh, Joseph. And she's found to be with child. And Joseph, being a righteous man, was going to, I mean, he could have had her killed. He could have had her stoned. By law, he could have said, she's pregnant. I didn't touch her, somebody else did it, and we need to kill her. He could have had a big public display of her in, in which he simply said, we're not going to kill her, but we'll put her away. Probably a good idea when you're dealing with Rome as the ultimate authority on who could take a life and death. But um, they would put them away, and, and the lady, was for the rest of her life, was in serious trouble. And she was gone away from that guy. But Joseph decided to put her away quietly. What does that mean? He was just going to go, Mary, uh, I'm not going to bring charges. We're not going to do this, but you're gone. You know, th this I can't do. Well, of course, we, we know the story. The angel appeared to Joseph at night and said, no, 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 you, 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 it, it's okay. This is not done by man. This is me. Whoa, what a dream. Um, and and he obeyed God and uh, kept her uh, until she had the child, but did not uh, consummate their own marriage. They did not come together physically until after she had had the child. Um, I think I would have thought about the same thing too. What is within her is via the Holy Spirit. Okay. <laughs> Uh, well, um, that would have been a, quite a dream to interpret, you know, Mary. <laughs> I mean, uh, anyway, he didn't, he did not get humanly jealous. Do you understand what I'm saying? He wasn't humanly jealous. I think he was humanly concerned for what was right. But he did not become humanly jealous because human jealousy is, is agape is not jealous. Why? It's one big reason. One huge reason. And this is where they come together. Agape is not jealous because agape, or rather, I'm sorry, a jealous jealousy is focused on me. When I'm jealous, it's not because I love you, it's because I love me. I heard a fellow one time say, 
about a relationship. And, oh, uh, about with young people and their relationships. It was so I thought it was so incredibly accurate. Oh, I love me. I want you. And oh, boy, you know that's a little too close to home. Now that's mankind. I love me. I want you, and I don't want you paying attention to anything except me. Now, the difference is God's jealousy, and that's what we're talking about, the difference between God's jealousy. Why would 1 Corinthians 13, of all places, say uh, jealousy is, is not, or agape is not jealous? Because... The word agape is reserved, I'm sorry, but you need to, to hear me. The word agape in scripture is reserved for God's love. Well, wait a second, aren't I supposed to be agape people? Yes, you are, but you're not, and you won't, and you ain't. That's Southern for forget it. Well, why does it say that? 1 Corinthians 13, perfect example. First three verses. If I speak with the tongues of men, I speak. It's already in the first person. Um, if I have the gift of prophecy and, have all, and know all mysteries and all knowledge, first person, about me. Um, if I give all my possessions to feed the poor and I deliver my body up to be burned, first person, it's all about me. All of those, th those things I can do. Because it's about me. But then it shifts gears. Love is patient. Love is kind. Is not jealous. Does not brag and is not arrogant. Now, I'll change it. And Miss Davis, you have to sit there and no guffawing noise <laughs> when I do this, okay? Mike Davis is, and the you student body, you do the same thing. Mike Davis is patient. I mean, I'm going to start laughing. Mike Davis is kind. Mike Davis is not jealous. Mike Davis doesn't brag. Mike Davis is not arrogant. It's it just gets worse. I got to quit that. You're in trouble. Uh, ugh. Why? I can, because it's written that way. I can't, and and those three things are not true love. The first three verses I can do. I can give my body to be burned. I can do all these different things. I can, but I will not. Do that list. The list in 1 Corinthians 13 that says love is patient, love is kind, it, that's agape. Agape is patient. I am not patient. God is patient. Uh, I find my old age me being patient about things. And trust me, no one is more surprised than me. And... That's something I, I was never part of my life until I really began to, will you take over? Please do this. And I would be shocked at behaviors. Wait a second. I'm supposed to be jealous here. I should be being angry. And I'm not. Love is patient. Love is kind. Oh, that's a tough one. If you just meditated on love is kind for the rest of your life, it would probably hurt you so bad. You'd be so messed up. It, that is the, when I think about that one, that is the broadest of words for our behavior as Christians. Kind? Do unto others as you wish they would do unto you? Hmm. Uh, it's, it's breathtaking in its scope. Uh, patience may be every once in a while, but kindness? The, the problem is with kindness, I can't just do some kind act. If it's really kind, it really, 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 really isn't involved with me. I'm not doing the kind act to get your attention. I'm doing it because I simply want to be kind to you and bless you, not for you to go, wow, that's the kindest person I've ever met. Wow, that Dr. Davis is kind. Other people would take you out and slap you around and go, what are you talking about, man? I know him and he is not. 
that's that's true i'm not but the more that christ lives in me the more i shockingly see notice i didn't say i'm i'm kind that i see kind behaviors coming out of me that i know should not be that be there but what's going on he and his presence inside me is making the tree good either make the tree good so it'll produce good fruit or make it bad or cut it down do something with it now that is because uh, again with the, the difference between jealousy and jealousy the same word yeah but one of them is god's the other's mine and we are talking about the behavior of man if i am jealous it is man's jealousy and it's not agape okay if god is jealous there is a different jealousy i can kind of explain it in this way we're actually talking about this a few days ago uh, I only remember this happening to me once. That's okay. It, one of the kids, little one, was running in toward, the, it was the classic, the ball went into the street type thing, you know, and, and you scream. I mean, I'm sorry, you scream. Stop! Get the kid's name out there. And of course, the kid thing is absolutely certain that you hate them, that you're angry, in my case, again. Um, and, 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 and you kind of are. You've got enough adrenaline going inside you right now. <laughs> because they weren't watching. And little kids don't watch. Uh, there's reasons for 30 miles an hour in, in residential areas. I often drive residential areas with my left foot right over the brake. Uh, years ago, I learned to drive with that left foot on the brake. They tell you don't do that because if your foot is pressed down, you're going to ruin your brakes. Well, I learned to do it with a, a cramped left foot, but still, when it's, it's, it's dangerous like that, that foot is up there. And because uh, it, it, you don't know, I've, oh, I've almost... Two or three times through my life, you know, this kid, uh, and you, you're so shaken by it. Uh, it was close, but wasn't so close that, you know, you almost hit the kid or you bumped the kid or something like that. But you saw them about to jerk out in front of you and slam on the brakes and pull off to the side. And the kid got stopped, too. So you're going, okay, everything is fine. It's not fine. I I'm driving like this now. Uh, for the next year. You, your jealousy, the anger, the oh, stop that, is not about you. The attempt, the desire, with your imperative, with the loudness, with the commanding, is I'm trying to save your life. Now, we're at least getting a little bit closer. Uh, I can't say perfectly why. Because I wouldn't want that kid killed on my watch. Uh-oh, it just became about me again. Never mind. That's one of the issues, okay? But when God says, I don't want you going over to those pagan gods, and he sends a prophet and sends another prophet and says, Quit going over to those pagan gods and those pagan women and those pagan men. Stop it. He's being jealous. But it's not because of his life. And it's not because he's demanding, I just have to have you. brother. Um, oh, but if you won't worship me, I'm going to throw a fit. See, this is some of the bull about this worship stuff. That I mean, anyway... Yes, we should worship God, give him worship. That, that's, so much of that stuff is focused on me. I, you, can, you can hear it. <clears throat> you go to one of these places where they're having the emotional um, uh, band and they've got the drums and everybody's, and you know, and they've got the doo -wah ladies and all that stuff and they're cheering. Yay, rah. 
and afterwards, man, what worship good today? Yes, amen. Worship was good. Why? Why are you evaluating that worship was good? Because I could feel it. It felt good for me. This is incredibly stupid. Uh, oh, I felt good, so God must have been happy with our worship. I think I tried asking that to one person one time. It wasn't fun. Uh, they, they, they don't they want to hear that. But it felt good, so it must be right. Hmm. There's something wrong with that. This is, this is not evaluating. This is not giving God the worship that he says. If all it is is uh, a, a, a twisting and, uh, of, and a, a, a pulling on emotions, that's about me. That's about the crowd. That's about we entertained you, and so you'll come back next week. Please bring your money to pay for your ticket. Um, and the cover charge. Mankind, when man is jealous, man is jealous and is desiring and demanding the attention, demanding the worship, demanding that you're bowing down. And I think it's very fairly clear from what we said so far, mankind's Jealousy is completely different than God's. God's jealousy, and we could look in the command, commandment, second commandment, <clears throat> for I, Yahweh, your God, am a jealous God. You shall not make for yourself an idol or any imagination of anything that is in heaven above, the earth beneath, the water that is under the earth. You shall not worship them or, and here comes the big one, serve them. We do not realize that so many of the things that we go, oh, I'm going to give myself to it, eventually you begin to serve it. Your time goes, service. Well, think about it. Your time goes to that object. Um, <clears throat> video games, spending hours staring at YouTube videos, uh, uh, watching television, uh, you know, uh, listening to music, all those things. You are, you are taking part of your life. You have a finite amount of time on this earth. It's going to start, it started already, and it's going to end one of these days. You are not guaranteed that you're going to walk out of here alive. Um, you don't like seeing those pictures of the, of the kids with the cancers. And they're, they're, wait a second, because you kind of, that's, how can a child have cancer like that? They're too young. They're supposed to live. Well, they did live, you know, but, but we, we react to it. They need to have a long life. Um, I told you before, I, I, a good friend, he was in his early thirties at the time that this happened, uh, subarachnoid aneurysm of the brain. Now, he didn't die. He had the headache. And, and they went in and they found this bulge in his um, uh, arterial system. And they were able to cut that out before it burst. If it would have burst, he would have died in the office next to me at the age of 32. Wow. That can't, just that quick. Uh, if you have a, an aneurysm, an aortic aneurysm, abdo abdominal aneurysm, what they often call it, and it bursts, you have 60 seconds. That's it. You will die. Period. And it doesn't matter what the age is. This, the, and we, oh, it's got to be this way. Life and, and these, these things that we... It's, it's, it becomes about, everything's about me. And God's desire, when he's being jealous, is saying, I'm trying to preserve you and keep you away from this stuff that's going to kill you. It's going to kill you. 